Are you tired of spending hours on end perfecting a single sketch only to realize it's not quite right? Or do you wish you had a tool that could help you work faster, be more efficient, and give you more creative flexibility? In today's video, I'm going to teach you a way of sketching that is probably pretty unconventional for most of you because it entails sketching less like a fine artist and more like a graphic designer. Hi artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I'm a pro artist and graphic designer. And in this video, I'll show you how one simple art supply can supercharge your sketching process and take your process to the next level. And guess what? You might be surprised to learn that this is a tool that you probably have sitting somewhere in your home office or in a drawer somewhere, and that is tracing paper. And I know, I know it's not the most magical or exciting thing, but artists, as with so many other art supplies, it's not the what, but the how you're using it that matters. So let me tell you a little story. When I first started working as a graphic designer for a large branding agency in New York City, I would spend countless, countless hours sketching out ideas only to realize that my first concept wasn't exactly working and it wasn't quite right. So then I would have to start all over again, which was incredibly time consuming, not to mention frustrating. And of course, that was completely unacceptable in such a fast paced and um, you know, in such a competitive environment. So one day my creative director noticed my struggle and recommended that I try using tracing paper. And to be honest, at first I was really skeptical because I always associated tracing paper with cheating or with you know beginner level artists who weren't confident in their drawing skills. However, my boss assured me that it was a really common tool in the professional design industry and that I should give it a try. I decided to take his advice and give tracing paper a chance. So I picked up a pack of tracing paper from the art supply store and started experimenting with it. And what I found was that using tracing paper completely changed the way I approached my work. With tracing paper, I was able to quickly and easily experiment with different layouts and compositions without having to worry about ruining my original sketches. I could sketch out a rough concept on one sheet of paper and then place a sheet of tracing paper over it to try out different variations and different options. If I didn't like what I had come up with, I could simply just discard the tracing paper and start all over again without having to redo my entire sketch. Not only did tracing paper help me work more efficiently, but it also gave me the ability to keep all of my versions intact. So instead of revising my sketch destructively as in and like erasing every time I wanted to try out a new idea, I could keep every single iteration of changes so that if a client ever wanted to, let's say, revisit version number two after me having done nine or even 10 changes, I had every single one saved and could pull it out at the drop of a hat. And let me take it a step further. If you can start to think of your sketch process as stages and use tracing paper like building up the drawing step by step in modular sections, you can really supercharge your entire drawing process. And I know it's not your typical way of working, but learning how to do it this way, in my opinion, will you know just turn you into a sketching machine. So let me give you an example. I recently decided to make a watercolor monogram for my daughter's note cards. I know, I'm old school, but I really wanted something elegant and sweet to send to our friends and family who had sent us baby gifts. And um, I felt like watercolor, like a watercolor crest or a monogram with her initials was a really lovely handmade touch. Crests are always quite technical to create, and I would know because I do dozens of them every year. And there are so many different options and ways of approaching it but with my tracing paper process, I was able to create my artwork in layers so I could easily and quickly swap in different options to share with my husband and my family before us you know, settling and deciding on what we liked best. Like what does it look like with or without a ribbon banner underneath? What kind of letters do we use for the initials? And what flowers or what shield shape do we like best? It's kind of like one of those paper dolls where you can try on different outfits and easily swap them in and out, except that you can do that for your sketch. 
So coming back to my daughter's crest, once I was happy with the final result, I could trace the whole thing on a new sheet of tracing paper, or I could even photocopy or scan it to then easily transfer it to watercolor paper and do the final painting. And by the way, if you don't know my DIY trick for easily transferring any photo or drawing to watercolor paper, I have just the video for you. Just click on the card above to learn more about this other amazing hack that's going to be a total game changer for you. And if that wasn't enough to convince you about how cool tracing paper is, here's another thing that's really great if you want to do a drawing that's completely symmetrical. Tracing paper will be your new best friend if you're looking to do a symmetrical drawing because you can just fold it in half at the line of symmetry, trace one side, and then once you unfold it, you can perfectly trace the other side to create a symmetrical drawing. And this is a technique I use all the time for when I'm creating logos, crests, or anything that requires a perfect symmetry and it works like a charm every time. And lastly, here's another bonus for you gouache or acrylic painters out there. Here's another way of using tracing paper. Just get your background all painted out first and then you can play around with your foreground by putting your focal points and your elements on tracing paper and moving them around on your background before committing to a final version and painting it. Here's how I used it to figure out all of my ballerinas on this fun semi-abstract piece I made about Swan Lake at the Paris Opera Ballet. I used tracing paper to play around and get a nice preview of where I wanted my lead swan to be. And once I was happy with her and with her positioning on the page and I was ready to commit to that direction, I just easily transferred that sketch right back onto my background and I was good to go. So as you can see, tracing paper is a truly, truly amazing and a workhorse item and is absolutely essential in my workflow, saving me lots and lots of time and supercharging my process. And I hope that you give it a go. And if you do, drop a comment below and let me know how it worked out for you. And if you already use tracing paper for anything in your own art process, be sure to let me know why, how, and all the details of how you use it, because I would love to know. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all my latest art videos and hit the notification bell too, so you never miss a beat. Thank you so much for watching and for joining me every week, and I will see you next time.